So for shortlisting in university, personally, I feel there are the, there are four criteria which you should think about, and I have listed them down in an order of priority. Okay, first and the most important criteria which I feel uh, while university selection, which you need to take care of, is location. Location is the key to success. Okay, uh, because you might have heard you just have to be. at the right time at the right uh, with the right skills uh, at the right spot right i feel location is extremely important because be, because of the way the hiring works right uh, a lot of times people uh, recently i have started getting this question uh, that uh, hey after pandemic like uh, during pandemic a lot of things have changed right uh, the way we used to work has changed so does location still apply i personally feel it still applies because if you see the industry is going back to the hybrid model right in us at least uh, wherein you would work in the uh, you would work in the office for a couple of days or maybe 3 days and then the other days you would just work from home the other thing because of which location is very important is if you know for your h1 visa wherever you are working uh you have to live within 50 miles of that location okay uh now and there are multiple other reasons okay but there will be uh, some restrictions which the company will apply uh even from the hiring perspective most of the times companies would want to gen- they tend to hire people who are local because they don't have to pay relocation right uh if you don't know what relocation means i'll give you an example let's say you are studying in uh utd okay university of texas dallas now you got a job as a software engineer in amazon in silicon valley bay area let's say bay area means there are a lot of cities within bay area but let's say it's in sunnyvale right which is next to our where i am uh so now amazon needs to pay for you to relocate from dallas to sunnyvale so they need to pay for your flight tickets they need to pay you some money to you know come here and live for at least a week um so there is a relocation allowance that they have to pay to you and generally companies naturally they would want to save that right uh, so that's where and a lot of companies have these uh, kind of restrictions um uh, right so for that reason i feel it is extremely important that you study from a university which is close to your location of industry okay now what does that mean i'll give, take an another example there are two universities i'll give a, give you an example of one is sunny buffalo sunny buffalo is an amazing university by the way uh their curriculum is really good really strong curriculum for machine learning and data science kind of stuff profiles uh but sunny uh, buffalo doesn't have the location advantage now if you compare that with sjsu sjsu is in silicon valley like where it's just couple of miles away from where i live currently uh, so sjsu might not have the curriculum as good as sunny buffalo but sjsu has huge huge location advantage right because within just 10 miles there are like 150 100 200 companies right Uh, and it's in the heart of the silicon valley right uh, so if i get an admit from hsu and another admit from sunny buffalo for a same course i would go with hsu okay uh, so that is how you should evaluate okay so location is the first key criteria second criteria is tuition fee and living expenses okay i feel the reason i feel for the, uh, this should be the important criteria is because the amount of money that you put in or that you invest let's say that invest is the right word i feel the amount of money that you invest in your masters will not will not decide how much you are going to make after masters what do i mean by this okay let's say you uh, let's say you pursue your masters from Texas Dallas okay now Texas Dallas fees is around i think around 15 to 20000 dollars per semester that comes to around 60000 dollars for two years let's say your living expenses are 10000 dollars so you ended 
you ended up spending about seventy thousand dollars to pursue masters from Texas. Okay, let's say you got a job in Austin. Okay. Okay. Mm. Pani barobar hai. we got to we got a sneak peek into the insider conversation okay that's good uh, but let's continue with the example now let's say you got a job in uh, austin right calculate the amount of money that you will make in austin by after spending 70000 versus let's say now you pursue masters from csu la right your fees will be around $40000 Twenty thousand dollars will be about your expenses. Less than that, but I'm just taking a round figure in uh, example. And the income that you make after I don't know how many of you guys recognize this ringtone, uh, but there is an amazing season called as Panchayat. Definitely watch; it's highly recommended. Uh, so in that, one of the characters have this ringtone. Okay, uh, so continuing with the example, now let's say you spend sixty thousand dollars to pursue masters in CSU LA. How much would you, how much would be your income or your package CTC after you, after you uh, graduate from CSU LA? You compare these two packages, and then obviously there there are a lot of things uh, like purchase parity and kind of those things taxes, but you would re realize that one of the fundamental things that you will realize is amount of money that you put in your masters does not guarantee you uh, uh high income right uh so personally i always feel that you should try to put in as less as possible to get the best education and get the location advantage that's that's where you get the best roi return on your investment right excuse me sir can i ask a question sure sure sir uh, so are you suggesting that uh, the recruitment uh, opportunities uh, in the universities of california are uh, better than the university of texas uh not exactly in the university because here uh, recruit there is like no college recruitment here right if uh, okay. just like uh, just like in india what used to have like i am from i graduated from mit in pune so what we used to have is campus placements so there will be like a yes, company yes. coming on campus and we used to get a job directly in the campus so that is yes, not something which happens here but what happens is since you have a lot of companies around the university let's say la right csu la there are tons of companies in la and in san diego which is south of la so you would be able to land good income opportunities in those universities if you graduate from there and you would still end up spending less money compared to you would spend in utd right uh, so you have to compare that way right how much money i'm going to make after i graduate right and for that income how much money i'm investing so that's how that's how i thought about it uh, uh, and i was able to get some really good results with that right uh, so second point is tuition fees and living expenses the third is curriculum quality now i would really encourage you uh, to you know go through the curriculum that the uh, university has for the course right because remember what are what is the first step that we did we identified the skill sets that are required for the profile that you want to work in right now the way this connects to your curriculum is you need to have at least 3 to 4 good courses in your masters which will prepare you for your internships and secondly your masters uh, uh, secondly your full time job right because a lot of folks who are coming from a background where they don't have a experience first second uh, they do they are changing their profile in the sense that they are changing their field someone is coming from let's say a testing background they want to be a product manager right someone is coming from mechanical background they want to be a data scientist or a business analyst uh, or a pro program manager right you would need and relevant uh, you would need relevant experience in your resume for your resume to get shortlisted and that's where it is very important for you to really go through the curriculum 
or at least the courses which are uh, which you need to take as a part of your masters right and how do you do this it is pretty simple you can just go on the website of the uh, uh, you can just go on the website of the university and look into the curriculum right they will have certain details about the curriculum you can also reach out to folks from the university who are currently pursuing masters right and take real time uh, feedback that okay which are which professors are good which professors teach well which professors have really industry focused uh, uh, syllabus for their course right you would want to do this research so that that gives you an idea about okay in this university the courses are really building me for the industry versus in this uh, university the courses are so so uh, and i need to put in a lot of work from my end to learn things you will anyways have to put in a lot of work from your end to be ready for the industry but you would want to leverage the money that you are already investing to prepare yourself right i'll give give you guys an example so in sjsu there is a course it's uh, uh, number 273 uh and the professor is professor shim okay now if you take this course the projects that you build as a part of this course are pretty uh i would say pretty hands on okay because of which was what ends up happening is you first you get a good project added in your resume second you, since you are hands on with these projects you are at least the basic skill set gets built just as a part of the course while you're learning okay so you don't have to build any other skill set it is just getting built as you are going through the course there there used to be another course uh, another professor in sjsu his name is paul so he he used to be one of the toughest uh, professors uh, and he used to teach a couple of courses one is 202 which was just enterprise distributed systems and there was a 281 which is a cloud course he was again amazing professor whatever you do in his class that is something which is done in industry same thing maybe at a different scale but same thing uh, what uh, you would do so spend a lot of time really digging through the curriculum quality okay because this will ensure that in the two years that you are going to spend in the university you are being prepared for the industry where you want to work in okay and the last thing or the last criteria which you should use to evaluate the university is scholarships and on campus jobs okay now notice i have put in the scholarships as the last uh and these by the way these four attributes are in the order of priority so i personally give scholarships the last priority because see what the purpose of scholarships is to reduce my expenses essentially and uh basically to reduce my expenses right now if i am able to reduce my expenses just through on campus job or getting a better internship i would want to prioritize that i don't want to give scholarship that much of an importance okay uh so as to no, picking a university which is uh which is giving me a, a scholarship but it doesn't have the location advantage it doesn't have curriculum there are certain universities uh like uh, syracuse or there is stevens so their fees is 80000 dollars okay and they will give you 10000 dollars per year as a scholarship so you are still spending 60000 dollars right now if you are uh, picking some university not the case with syracuse or uh, uh stevens or rit rit is another university which has a very high fees but they give you scholarship okay it really doesn't make that much of a difference i feel if you uh, because personally i also had rit i had applied in 2013 uh, i had a scholarship of about i think 8000 dollars per year something like that so even if you have a scholarship if you end up going to a school which doesn't have a location advantage which doesn't have a good curriculum you would end up suffering for finding a job you know and that's something i would not want for any of you who have joined okay so that's where i put scholarships as the last you know uh, but if possible definitely look for scholarships if if available definitely look for it i mean why not 
you know just take it um and on campus jobs this is another very important thing i personally feel you should be able to go to a city where you have good number of on campus jobs uh, not ta and ra i generally do not recommend ta and ra and you might have watched a video on that personally i do not feel they are productive okay uh, i am talking more about desk jobs like student assistant or some it assistant some kind of things where you where once you leave the job you don't have to take the job with you at home versus something like ra if you get a ra job the same thing which requires someone to do a 10 hours of research to come to a conclusion might someone else might need 20 hours right and i have seen personally this and this is just again my personal experience uh that you would end up spending much more time than what you get paid for in ra and ta okay because there is a lot of pre preparation that you need to put in to be ready for that job every every week okay so i generally recommend jobs where you don't have any uh, you know which once you leave the job is done you know it's only physical it's not mental it doesn't require your mental energy uh but on campus jobs are huge definitely you need on campus jobs so that you can pay for your uh living expenses and that way you don't have to you know spend uh, money from your loan okay uh, so these are the four things which i feel are very important in evaluating an university 